Hello and welcome to my uh, talk for uh, VDEF 2020. My name is Dr. Ari Chan. I'm a lecturer of visual communication design at the School of Creative Industries at the University of Newcastle. And I acknowledge and respect the Pambuong clan of the Awabakal people, the traditional custodians of the, of the campus of which the University of Newcastle is situated and recognise their continuing connection to the land, uh, waters, culture, and pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging. Uh, I'll be talking about symbolic violence and the importance of inclusive design stories. So taking from respectful design and the values of inclusivity, people's cultures and the ways of knowing. Design education needs to decolonise and start thinking about alternative and dominant um, storytelling when it comes to teaching students how to navigate this complex world. Socio-cultural reproduction reinforces systemic issues of representation and viewpoints. And the conceptual frameworks around this are really important for how we use speculative thinking into the future. Uh, how we think about history and futurology and how they have a shared affinity. They are both the children of a moving present. So looking back teaches us ways of thinking and how do we create these critical fictions in the processes of deconstructing the power of the 20th century and how modernity is half of the story and coloniality is the other hidden half. Uh, so how can reproduction of a colonial matrix affect us and especially here in Australia, how do we unlearn those behaviours of design education in order to relearn what design means for us? Uh, and our area. So if we start to take the presupposition that the contemporary world uh, can be considered a massive design failure, um, how do we start to think about moderns and non-moderns and how they uh, develop things for the future? In order to decolonise an actively future, visual communication design as soft power has the ability to manifest symbolic violence within the tensions of cultural production. So it's evident in a more globalised and visually mediated world that visual communication across journalism and reportage, education and knowledge, transference, persuasive advertising and marketing, narrative fictions and entertainment is embedded across all of the human contexts of practice that students will be engaged, engaged with uh, as they move throughout their education uh, in whatever form that takes. And design is a way of being, and, and we need to think about this as we collectively move forward and how design has power in a post-human, anthropocentric uh, world, uh, and how do we build new forms of pragmatism deeply connected to communicating and influencing collective ideas. And visual communication design is a highly influential form of soft power, uh, and this brings us to an important point of recognising the dominant Western narratives that have uh, been present in, in uh, design education in institutional senses, um, that we still want to build the polymathic philosophy of history and epistemology and all of these different things within students' thinking, but the socio-cultural stories we keep telling large and small are also really important for how they may click and understand design. And how might things like Indigenous Design Charter or other uh, organisations thinking about decolonising design and telling stories help build and, think us to, and, and design students to think about how they negotiate the social, cultural and economic capital of them producing in the world, whether it be experiences or whether it be physical objects, and that the designer sees the world in order to be in it. So they must observe and engage the visual cognition afforded them, not only a socially and culturally way, cultural way but physically as embodied significance of moving through and experiencing things uh, and how we understand symbolic violence and, uh, and symbolic capital. So symbolic violence to put it tersely is simply as possibly as the violence which is exercised upon a social agent with his, with his or her complicity. The history of design is often myopic and we have this deeply ingrained hierarchical thinking that hop, uh, happens in a utopian sense when we start to think about how these things come around and that every even the contemporary design use of the term user sort of dehumanises the process of engaging with one another. Uh, that utopian sense is also about giving voices to individual people uh, so that we can trace the history of the Bauhaus but also think about how many have disenfranchised people and how students do that too so that we diversify not only how we're teaching but what we're teaching as stories so what does design education do in this 
visual communication is, has become in soft power. The students seem to use the culture medium knowingly, unknowingly, creatively and spontaneously throughout the design process. Uh, and that whether they're thinking about exposing dyslexia and how it might operate for someone moving through the world or developing a typeface like Christian Boa, that, that you're presenting these types of case studies and examples to students, whether they're working in an analog or digital way, uh, that they, they're exposed to these processes of excess, uh, making that icon for the disabled it more accessible, like Sarah Hendren and Brian Glennie, exposing these stories to students and that they might be in their own uh, backyard, like here in Newcastle for me. How do we think about ageing and how that process of empathy building is really important for what they do and, and create in the world? typefaces that work across multiple language systems and we develop multiple super families of scripts and, and uh, superscripts um, across languages. How do we start to use data information and visually communicate sort of myths around how storytelling works in these processes of, of police murders of black Americans uh, and using alternative ways of presenting information how do we think about the stories of like mixed race people and not just having this uh, stereotype but the people of colour in general across the world having a voice and having stories uh, and using design research methods for mapping these experiences. We're using illustration like this example from Cecilia Flume, Flume who was an adoptee to a Swedish family using illustrations as a storytelling mechanism and showing these these examples to students or how the arrival of migrants and refugees to Europe was affected by creating interactive, uh, um, visually rich and vibrant um, and maybe using traditional techniques to communicate the story. This is an example from a PhD student here at Newcastle, Christian from Brazil, who looks at censorship within the Brazilian government and how visual communication has played such an important role in that people, des people's designed experience. This is one of my past Indigenous students, Jasmine, um, and using her skills, her communication skills, to communicate how stories work for uh, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people in Australia and believing that design can help those stories be enacted for people. Uh, thank you for listening to my talk. Uh, thank you.